resume our meeting, if you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And then please remain standing. Why does this one? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled. We don't have a microphone system so that when you do speak this evening, if you could just raise your voice because we are filming the meeting. So good evening everybody and welcome. I'd like to uh, introduce and welcome Pat Fudor, I saw her somewhere, representing our Administrators Association. Lori Hauser is here tonight from the Federation of Classroom Teachers. Jane Keedle, who is now covering the news for the patch. I'd also like to uh, welcome a number of our Boy Scouts who are here this evening for community service. And I just want you to know you picked a real winner for tonight. This is our most <laughs> action-packed Board of Education agenda that we've had the entire school year, so welcome. And I'm just looking to see if we have other members of the various town boards. Is there anyone else here? Okay, so we're ready to begin. Welcome. We come to our very favorite piece of the meeting this this evening and it's recognizing our students with the Cave Leadership Award. And so I believe at this time is Ms. Mr. Sachs or Ms. McCrina? You know, sure. Sure. <laughs> this is one of those really pleasant evenings and uh, it's with great pleasure that I make two presentations tonight. And uh, the first is going to be to Susan Hayes, who I, I asked to join me up here. And she's joined by her mom and dad, her sister and her brother. Thank you very much for coming. And I'd just like to uh, read a brief profile of some of uh, Susan's accomplishments uh, in her four short years here at Waterford High School. <coughs> Excuse me. Susan Hage, a senior at Waterford High School, is in the top 25% of her uh, graduating class. In her past four years of high school, she has earned honors or high honors each quarter, demonstrating her commitment to academic success. Susan is a member of the Three Rivers uh, College Career Pathways Program and received an Achievement Award for the Early Childhood Education Assessment Exam. An active and vocal member of her class, she has participated in class council since her freshman year. In this role, she has helped implement various initiatives and organized uh, fundraisers to raise money for her class. Recognized as a leader amongst her peers, she was elected treasurer in her junior year, and this year serves on the executive board. Susan enjoys working with children and has been a volunteer for the elementary school summer program, as well as the friendship school. Susan is very excited about being accepted to the University of Connecticut pre-kinesiology program, where she will major in physical therapy. Susan's high school accomplishments will help her to achieve her college goal. And let me just say that this is one of the most personable and compassionate young women I have known in my tenure year at Waterford High School. And this is a real pleasure. Congratulations.
Congratulations on this very fine award, and I'll read it for everyone. Leadership. The Connecticut Association of Boards of Education awards this Student Leadership Award to Susan Hage Waterford High School for distinguished leadership in school activities and daily life. And we just heard a whole litany of them. So congratulations, congratulations to you great. and the very best. The next awardee is Baird Welch Collins. Baird, come on up. And Baird is joined by his family tonight, his mom and his dad, and his grandmother. grandmother. Very nice to see you. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome. Thank you. No <laughs> Okay, Baird, an intelligent, mature, well-mannered, responsible, and exceptionally unique student. Baird has a unique way of looking at things. His soft voice has a defined vigor. His arguments are always accompanied with a great reservoir of data and presented in a manner of truth searching, no matter how different his opinions are from those of others. He has a very successful four years at Waterford High School. Academically, Baird's transcripts reveal that he is a very strong student. He has taken some of the most challenging courses offered at our high school. His success in these courses attests to his intelligence, his commitment, his self-discipline, willingness to participate in class activities, and organizational abilities. Baird has a very eclectic resume of extracurricular interests. He has played in the high school orchestra since freshman year. Baird taught himself to play mountain dulcimer, banjo, Irish bazooki, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar and fiddle, and has created a Celtic music group with two of his classmates. Since then, Celtic music, the name of his group, has established a solid repertoire and continues to play for community services and a variety of functions. Baird's talent in music and skills in managing has earned and enabled him to realize his dream. Uh, he has been involved in some scientific projects, and he's constructed a wind turbine and built a raft to sail in local rivers. <laughs> he is fascinated by the subtle power of music to lead social changes in history. He was inspired by Irish protest songs and Woody Guthrie's effort to unionize migrant farm workers. So he incorporated these songs, whenever possible, in his public performances. He is a believer in buy local and has organized a protest against stop and shop sale of Canadian seafood. Uh, he has a peer tutor and beyond being a tutor, he's a mentor to many of the younger students at the middle school and here at the high school. And it's a distinct pleasure uh, that this rare young man receives this award and we're very, very proud of him. exemplifies the finest qualities of a student. He is industrious and productive, respectful and mature, friendly and selfless. Aside from being a stellar student, Nathaniel was chosen for this award because of his personal commitments to things non-academic, most notably family and scouting. Not surprisingly, he lists his mother Sally, his father Eric, and brother, Dil brother Dylan and his sister Sarah as the most significant people in his life. Nathaniel is very sociable and considers his friends second only to his family. He plays lead tenor saxophone in his school band. He takes care of his four cats, turtle, and betta fish. He enjoys doing his schoolwork for the most part and thinks learning is worthwhile and fun. He helps his family organize and plan for their yearly family reunions and he considers genealogy to be one of his favorite hobbies. 
The painter's most impressive achievement to date, and what likely defines him most completely, is his involvement with scouting. These experiences go back to first grade and have continued to the present. Now in Waterford's Troop 36, he has established himself only two ranks shy of scouting's highest rank, that of Eagle Scout. The amount of effort and determination this takes are sizable, as those with experience in the ways of scouting can attest. As a result, Nathaniel's personality displays those worthy ideals that scouting teaches, respect for others, love of country, enthusiasm for hard work, and a commitment to helping others. So congratulations on your Cape Student Leadership Award. Good luck to you with your concern for others. It's really remarkable. We appreciate it. And congratulations on this Leadership Award. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, would you like to come join me, please? Karen is accompanied by her parents this evening. Karen Rose Mandelberg is a young girl with a big heart. Her entire life is shaped by concern for others. Through her church, she is involved in initiatives such as sending care packages to college students all over the United States and donating Christmas presents for children in countries like Haiti and Indonesia. With her sister, she makes bows and sells them online to raise money for schools in New York de devastated by Hurricane Sandy. This year in history class, as part of a unit called Clark Lane Cares, she created a memorable project educating her classmates about the cruelty of puppy mills. Her family has take, taken in numerous foster children, and Tierra and Rose helps support and nurture all of them. Amazingly, she still finds time to be a Clark Lane mentor and participate in dance 13 hours a week. Last, and certainly not least, she has earned high honors every trimester during her three years at Clark Lane Middle School while serving as an energetic, enthusiastic participant and leader in her class. All of us have been touched by Tierra Rose, and we have been humbled by her diplomacy, compassion, empathy, unwavering commitment to excellence in everything she attempts. This young lady is living proof <coughs> that one person can definitely make a beautiful difference in the world. Congratulations. <laughs> say that you are not obliged to stay for the rest of the meeting tonight, the parents and the friends of the students, but you're always more than welcome to continue with us this evening, but we'll allow for a minute recess if you'd like to get up. At this time, we will look at the uh, possible action regarding our central office contracts. Would someone like to make a motion to that effect? Um, I'd like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education moves to authorize the superintendent of schools to renew the terms and conditions of employment for central office and non-union staff members in accordance with his recommendations for salary increases and on such <laughs> other terms and conditions as he may determine appropriate. Thank you, Jody. Is there a second to that motion? <coughs> second by David. Is there discussion by the board? Does anyone need clarification? So we will move then to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That takes us right to the consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the April 18th regular meeting, the monthly expenditure report for April, food service report for March, and the write-off accounts receivable for 2011-2012. May I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. By Jody? Second. Second by Tim. Any discussion? Just a quick comment. The write-off just for our public is a very small amount due to some of the uh, variances with the lunch program. I don't want anyone to think we're writing off the <laughs> So, thank you. It's minimal. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 
That motion carries. Takes us right to our reading and correspondence. I have no uh, correspondence to share at this time. Oh, thank you. I just uh, will remind the board uh, on the cave that there will be in June, I think it's June the 11th, I'm not sure that I have it with me, but the uh, legislative, we'll talk about all of the issues that went through in the legislative session and also uh, some of those topics that we've all talked about with Common Core and the teacher piece evaluation. So check me on that, but I believe it was the 11th. And then I did receive, and I mentioned to the superintendent, and at the next uh, board we'll talk, uh, we received some correspondence about looking at Latin, uh, looking at the curriculum for Latin, for word power, for SAT. So I'll let you know a little bit more about that at the next meeting after we hear more about it. Um, and then just, um, I did not mention to the board, but I also received the minutes which I uh, neglected to let you know from the RTM every month. So if anyone wants to see those, I'm not sure if you don't probably do, do you receive those as well. No. So I can leave those in our box back at the office if you'd like from now on. Okay, and that's the only correspondence I have. Takes us right to the superintendent's report. Uh, what I'd like to do is something a little bit different with the report tonight. And um, uh, we have four of our administrators that are serving in the Waterford Public Schools this year uh, retiring. One of our members retiring for probably the second time in his career, but I'd like to start by recognizing Phil Russell, who has served as the Interim uh, Director of Finance and Operations for the Board of Education. Uh, Phil was called into duty a few days before school began. And he thought it would only be for a few weeks, but uh, who's counting? It's a full school year. <laughs> and I have to tell you, Phil has been a great partner in really taking a look at the most efficient way for us to spend our town resources. He's been a phenomenal resource to our administrative team. And although he thinks he tells the all-time best jokes, Phil, they're the worst. <laughs> but it has been a pleasure, and you have really been a lifeline to the Waterford Public Schools this year. So we'd like to acknowledge you. Now can I get paid? <laughs> several board members here that are saying we can't let him go. <laughs> we know that you must uh, go on now. We thank you for all your work. I know Mr. Belair has mentioned several times that he really took this job seriously, even though, as you said, of just a few weeks and found us and worked hard to get us our best savings throughout the year. And we really appreciate your fine work and wish you the very best in the future. We hope you'll come back at least to say hello to us. Thank you. For those of you in the audience, Phil once served in this capacity back in the 80s here in Waterford for the Waterford School District. So uh, this was his return, and he is definitely, he says to me, fully retired come June 30th. So. <laughs> the next member of our team that I'd like to recognize is uh, Lynn Lynch, who is retiring after 30 plus years of service all here in the Waterford Public Schools. And she began teaching back in uh, 1981 and she was in the area of family consumer science, worked with the Unified Arts team, served as a team leader. One of the things that was really interesting going back through her personnel file was looking at all of your involvement in athletics and sports through the ACE program, the after school athletic program. Boys soccer, girls basketball, stuff I never knew when, you know? And then she began as assistant principal at Clark Lane Middle School in 2005. And I have to tell you, one of the things that I have come to thoroughly enjoy in working with Lynn is she's the consummate professional. She has high expectations for herself, high expectations for the students, parents, and staff. You walk the talk. And you always enrich every discussion that we have at every meeting. And uh, I will miss you. You've been a terrific asset to the Waterford Public Schools. So congratulations, uh, and we hate to see you go. We would also like to recognize you and see that word there, consummate professional. Oh, we didn't even talk. I don't talk. usually take notes, but that, that's what first comes to mind. 
when we think about you're very efficient, organized, and you always do everything with a smile. You will, great, you will be sorely missed here in Waterford, I can tell you that, and, but I'm sure your husband behind you there, Brian, he's going to be <laughs> to have you in the retirement days, but we certainly appreciate your many, many decades of service to all of us here in Waterford. Thank you. Next, I'd like to recognize Dr. Nancy Massioni. Uh, tomorrow night, we have a chance to roast and toast mm -hmm. at a special celebration <laughs> for Dr. Massioni. There's no roast and toast. <laughs> uh, uh, this is one time you have no control over the event. But Nancy has had a distinguished career here in Waterford. She began as a school pathologist and then became a principal in Oswagachi School in 2001. And Nancy, one of the things that comes to mind, and I may say something like this again tomorrow night, but cool, calm, collected, you just have a presence, and you can tell that you are a speech pathologist. You're very articulate, you're clear, uh, we understand what you're saying, and you're, you've been a lifelong learner, and you've been uh, wonderful to work with. Nancy and I actually worked when I was teaching in Groton. And so, back in the, the 70s, I think it was Nancy. But uh, uh, one of the things that I found with Nancy in my time here in Waterford, uh, the students are always at the center of her decisions. And I can't think of a better compliment. So congratulations to you. And thank you. Also, Nancy, from the members of the Board of Education, we're, we must have to have tell her. Telepathy. Telepathy this evening. <laughs> lifelong learner comes right to my mind as well, but your warm, your compassion, and your love for your students. When you walk into Oswagachi, you feel that immediately from your school and your love of learning. I know that has uh, been really received well from your teachers as well as your students. So we are really going to miss you, your calmness, your compassion. Everything about you, Nancy, has just been so wonderful here in Waterford, and we wish you the very best. And I know I don't see Jane if he's, if he's here, but I'm sure he feels similar to Brian. You know. <laughs> we are definitely going to miss you, but we know we will see you again. So thank you, Nancy. And you've been, I don't ever recall you missing a board of ed meeting in all these years. So thank you for your service. You know, one of the things, Nancy, that I heard, and I heard it really at, at all the elementary levels, when you think about the construction projects, when Oswagachi became a new school community, going from the five elementaries to three, how well you fostered building that sense of community and that transition into a new school. So uh, that really has is a high mark for you, and, and greatly appreciated. If I may, Mr. Miller, I'm speaking for the board, but because been here with us. If any other board member, please feel free. I don't want to speak only because some of the board members may wish to say something. But go ahead. Next is Don Macrino, who has been on a retirement tour for a year. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I have to tell you, uh, one of the things that's really special about Don is that he has such a great respect from his colleagues. And uh, Don began here in Waterford as the assistant principal back in 1994. Don is uh, student-centered, he's people-oriented. Uh, you know, you always get that warm welcome, that big smile, so how you doing? So how you doing? And uh, you're caring, you're approachable, you were the cast principal of the year in 2008, served on the NASSP board, representing Connecticut principals well. But I have to tell you, the high school construction project from the outside and now that you're inside might seem like it was a piece of cake. I have to tell you, it was no piece of cake. And uh, having the opportunity to work alongside of you to ensure that this building is going to be a fa fantastic place for learning and uh, really having it feel like it went so seamlessly to make it happen, I'm so glad you were able to bring uh, the first class into Waterford High School. And Don, you'll be missed and greatly appreciated. Thank you. that you are you have been really a principal exemplar really throughout the years that we've known you again you've never missed a board of education meeting ever in all these years and I can say that Mr. Macrino has always said to the board of education please feel free to come in see the school visit he's always welcoming and always there for his students 
when you walk through the high school with Mr. Macrino, you meet a lot of people and you learn a lot of names because he knows every one of his students by name. It's remarkable, and not just the students, but the custodians, everyone that works in the school. He's really, like, it, there are no words to say how much you will be missed for all that you've done intellectually and with your heart to give to this whole entire district of Waterford. Right from the beginning when the board made some decisions that were not always easy, Mr. Macrino would always say, don't worry, we'll get there. If you recall, way back in the very beginning, the high school was the first school to be built, and we were all very disappointed when that didn't go through. And he said, don't worry, in the end, things work out, and look what the end result was. So he was the type of leader that always went with the board, always supported us, even when the decisions were difficult. And he certainly will be sorely missed. I know he has another political career out there for us. So. <laughs> he will be back here to see us and come often to see us in Waterford. There are no words really to express how we care for you. Thank you. It's very emotional. <laughs> Thank you. Um, at this time, we will go to our committee and other re Oh, may I just interrupt myself for a moment? Uh, <laughs> we want you to know that we will recognize you again at the retirement party with all of the administrators. We usually have a small gift of appreciation, but we decided we will see you again at the June meeting. So, Joe, would you just, like to say something? Just one quick thing. Uh, Don's a new grandfather. He oh. has, yeah. he has yeah. a That takes us right to our committee and other reports. <laughs> when you're looking, Jody, I'll just say the, uh, and where is Jim? The Waterford Education Foundation had a strategic planning session back last month, and Jim went well. And we'll report again on the goals for the uh, foundation in the future. But the spelling bee was very successful, and I'm sure they're continuing to uh, look to the future for more work. Thank you. Jody? I'll try to keep my reports brief. Um, we had an early childhood um, uh, learning center uh, meeting on Monday, and Kathy Superman went over uh, several items, but the most important was, I think, the special, special education uh, brochure that she gave all of us that, um, that has to do with the Friendship School and, and how the children are doing. And I asked Joyce to make copies for all the board members so you could read this, because I know our agenda is pretty tight. but. Um, Kathy gave an excellent presentation. She's really challenged with a lot of, uh, with many of the students that they have there now and the funding. And I really feel that the state, you know, Governor Malloy and everybody, they're always saying how important um, early childhood education is, but they never put the money, their money where their mouth is. So I hope that maybe we can do something to get them more funding. They've been on level funding, <coughs> excuse me, since they, uh, for the last five years. So hopefully we can do something about that. Uh, Kathy, uh, they've been very busy with staff appreciation. They had a bike safety fair where all the students that came received a free helmet thanks to the Gardner Foundation. They skip Bonanza and they're going to have an ice cream social in June. Um, the transition meetings for the district principals um, for the kindergartners going to uh, first grade have been going well. And um, the lottery and the enrollment, the lottery with the enrollment is going well also. So um, that's that one. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any other reports? Um, we had a Youth Service Bureau meeting last Wednesday, and so far 85 children are signed up for Camp Dash. It's a six-week program. Uh, also, counseling is still a challenge, um, but they're doing, they're doing well. Um, the school system has been helping out, and also um, the Gardner Foundation, again, they donated some money um, towards that. So. Um, you know, I think they're doing a very good job. And uh, so you, what was it? The dance. Um, so you think you can dance. So you think you can dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, that went very well, and I think everybody had a good time. Everybody, it was a nice family night. Um, okay, now the school building committee meeting. Um, it went very well, as you can see. The high school's completed. They're starting the demolition of the old part. They are going to do the baseball field this summer, and uh, that's pretty much it. We're still under budget, and we're going to stay under budget. <laughs> we're working really hard to do we that. To. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. 
but uh, as you can see, I mean, this building came out beautifully, it really did. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I just, uh, it's not really a report, but I would just like to recognize the Waterford Police Department. They recently did a uh, lockdown uh, drill, and I know Mr. Macrino and Mrs. Fedor and Mr. Sachs and myself, we were able to attend, and I just wanted to reassure the community that our police are in complete and full cooperation with the Board of Education, and they did a superb job, and I just want to recognize Nicole Vanderloop for inviting us to attend. Thank you. Um, that will take us moving along to a discussion and possible action on our new Asagachi Elementary principal. And I know Mr. Belair would like to make a few remarks. I'm uh, presenting to you uh, Mr. Christopher Osman, who happens to be sitting right next to Nancy Massione uh, as the recommended candidate uh, for the principalship at Oswagachi School. Chris comes with 26 years of professional experience. Uh, along his career path, he served as a teacher at grade four for 12 years, both in Lisbon as well as in Colchester. He also was an assistant principal in Colchester as well as served as principal for four years. Since that time, he worked with CERC and he's been a trainer uh, for the State uh, Education Resource Center, both of teachers and administrators. And recently, <laughs> until the end of June, he'll be serving as the uh, K-12 coordinator for math and science in Vernon. Members of our search team are sitting over in the back there. Chris tonight here to support you with the nomination and we're very excited to have you join the Waterford Public Schools. Thank you, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to get started and, um, and to be here and join this team. I've been so impressed with everyone I've met along the way and the things that are happening in Waterford and I got you. And, uh, can't come soon enough, so I'm ready to go. Not so fast, we haven't voted yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I was thinking that <laughs> We really need a motion quick. <laughs> To, um, accept Chris Osmond as the next yeah. principal yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education approves, um, approve Mr. Christopher Osmond as principal of Oswegatchie Elementary School, effective July 1st, 2013. Thank you, Jody. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Tim. Just on this note, just before we go to vote, I would like to welcome you this evening and to let you know that the board was very impressed with your entry plan and with all of your fine work, not only in the state level, but your entire leadership uh, resume. So we welcome you here to Waterford. And with that, we'll move to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know after so I Thank you very much. Thank you. And so maybe with the next one we should get a motion first. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, Kathleen, if I had a change to be a Yankees fan. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but welcome this evening. That takes us to our next possible action with the Clark Lane Middle School Assistant Principal. Mr. Miller, so I'm wondering if maybe you put a motion and then I say a few words? No, <laughs> Well, sitting right so next to uh, Lynn Lynch is Tracy Moore, and uh, there's a Colchester connection. So <laughs> Tracy is currently serving as math specialist at the elementary level in Colchester. She began her career as a middle school math teacher, a uh, graduate of Vanderbilt, if I recall, and uh, taught at uh, Mansfield Middle School up near Stores. And uh, as we were doing the search and as we did the reference check, uh, we were told it's a no-brainer. Uh, this is a person who is organized, has a great way with teachers, connects very well with students and families, and uh, Waterford will only gain by her employment. So I'm putting Tracy Moore's uh, name in uh, nomination as the next assistant principal at Clark Lane Middle School. And there are members of the search team scattered through the audience here to be uh, here in support of Tracy this evening. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. I'd just like to tell our audience too, that the board isn't saying too much this evening on these candidates, but we did go through an interview process with the candidates as well. 
So I'd also like to thank the search committee for coming out to support these candidates this evening. It's greatly appreciated. So with that, would somebody like to make the motion to accept Tracy Moore? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I remove that the Waterford Board of Education approved Ms. Tracy Moore as assistant principal of Clark Lane Hill School, effective July 1st, 2013. Thank you, Tim. Is there a second? Second. To second by John. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Congratulations, Tracy. Thank you. On to our next item, uh, I can tell you that someone very close to me right here has said, you know, it's surprising, but Waterford seems to get the absolute best premier administrators, and I think that's evident this evening, so thank you very much. That takes us right to our next item on the agenda, which is review and possible action of the new music curriculum, K-12. So many of our music staff are here, and if you didn't notice, uh, Ms. Idfall conducting the orchestra at the beginning. <laughs> and I'd like to turn this over to Craig Powers, who will introduce. Well, uh, I had the pleasure of work, working with uh, our entire music uh, educators, all nine of them. Um, and uh, to uh, paraphrase or possibly quote what uh, Sherry said, uh, Ms. Idfall thinks that this is the best curriculum that she has ever seen. So that speaks volumes. Uh, and I will let the the educators uh, sort of present the changes, but you'll see, I think, great enhancements in all three levels. And with that, I will turn it over to the area. Would you just introduce yourself to, to the board? Sure, absolutely. Uh, my name is Gary Valley. I'm the uh, music curriculum leader, K-12, Waterford Public Schools. I'm also the director of bands at Clark Lane Middle School. Thank you. Thank you for using your loud voice for the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Just raise your hand if it's if my booming voice it has an internal microphone. <laughs> A little background on the process. The last time uh, we revised our music curriculum comprehensively was in 2007. And what we did was we took the 2007 music curriculum, thoroughly reviewed it uh, over the past 10 months, and during this process we were able to address several questions that have come up during our POC meetings within the last year or two. During the revision process, we created a vision and mission statement we conducted a gap analysis between our present curriculum, the 2007 curriculum, and the current national standards of music. We also investigated uh, best practices in various music curriculums across the country and in the state of Connecticut. During the revision process, we worked within our grade levels and within our departments to develop overviews in each area, grade level expectations, instructional strategies, various uh, evidences of learning, pacing guides, and a matrix of expectations. With me, uh, working on this uh, curriculum renewal, is Patty Backus, Wayne Shadler, and Sherry Stitfold, who uh, revised the general music curriculum grades K-5. through uh, Lynn Massarelli, who uh, revised the instrumental strings curriculum 3-5, through five, and chorus in grade 5. Frank Parcaccini, who did the fourth and fifth grade uh, instrumental and band curriculum and the chorus in grade four. Barbara Comstock King, who did the general music and choral curriculum in grade six through eight. Myself, who did the instrumental and band curriculum in grade six through eight. Joe Winters, who did the instrumental strings curriculum in grade six through twelve. And Tim Fioravanti, who did the choral instrumental band and general music curriculum in grades nine through twelve. Some of the improvements. Um, that I believe we've made in this particular curriculum, <clears throat> we've increased the utilization of technology. We have a keyboard lab that will be installed at the middle school this summer. Uh, the Promethean boards in various buildings enable the use of flip charts and use of the World Wide Web for ins instruction. We have distinct uh, grade level expectations in each area in each grade level. We have clear pacing guides for each grade level and for each course. And with this user-friendly document, both 
new and experienced teachers will find it very, very easy to follow the pacing guides, the matrices, and the uh, general instruction. We've uh, organized some precise uh, milestones in student learning that are clearly identified in the document. There's an increased rigor of student expectations in the curriculum, which as a result, the students will be using much higher order thinking skills and take more ownership in their learning. We have distinct grade level assessments which will facilitate the identification of students who may be struggling in certain concept areas, but also identify as well students who are easily mastering the musical concepts and skills taught. These students will be better served as we work within our PLC and music department to develop support strategies to help them. And now I'd like to bring Sherry Stitfall up, who will take care of uh, reviewing the general <coughs> music curriculum in grades K through 5. Okay, so we wanted to have a picture and talk. I have to tell you that I have, a, except for Jerry, I have a connection with every person up here. This young man was my student, and I had his children, his children, her children, <laughs> her children, his children, and Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Gary stole a little of my thunder, so um, this curriculum is a more usable document for experienced and new teachers alike. It clearly lays out specific grade level expectations and a logical progression of skills. It all provides suggested instructional strategies and clear examples of what students need to do to map and demonstrate mastery. The pacing guide ensures that all concepts are being taught and students at all three elementary schools are learning them at the same time, so kids can move up among schools. The pacing guide also informs PLC meetings and collegial conversations. The new curriculum also places a greater emphasis on essential learning skills such as listening to peers and teachers, tracking eyes on the speaker, and responding appropriately to peer performances. And Gary's going to do the next part of the elementary. Right. The elementary uh, instrumental and chorus part, one of the biggest improvements is the levels of performance repertoire that the students will be learning both in grades 3, 4, and 5, and sight reading skills are clearly identified and marked in the curriculum. There's an increased rigor of student expectations also in the curriculum, and the new pacing guides help to facilitate the tracking of progress much more clearly for the individual students. The keyboard lab at Clark Lane Middle School is a, an extremely important enhancement in our curriculum. I'd like to thank everyone on the Board of Ed Mr. Belair, Mr. Powers, Mr. Sachs, and Mrs. Lynch for the support of this initiative. Uh, the Keyboard Lab will not only take care of a, a covering a lot of 21st century skills, but will also able uh, the students to enhance their learning by increasing the rigor of the curriculum and working with a lot of technology. Students will be doing composition projects based on national standards and get really into the deep aspects of composition, arranging, and other theory skills. All students in grade 6 at Clark Lane Middle School will be able to utilize this keyboard lab uh, in their general music classes. And all students at Clark Lane will be able to be afforded the opportunity to utilize this keyboard lab after school for various activities that we'll be planning during the next school year. That's not exactly what it's going to look like, but um, it's something similar. Um, the middle school chorus, band, and orchestra cur curriculums are aligning much closer now to the state and national standards in our new curriculum. The student understanding of music concepts is enhanced at every grade level in a sequential manner uh, developmentally appropriate based on these standards. Each student's growth will be monitored with, through various forms of direct assessment. In the string program, there will be development of uh, in-depth orchestral techniques and skills clearly identified in the matrices. Students' uh, musical knowledge will be enhanced with sequential appropriate literature that's built into the curriculum all through the middle levels. And students will be fostering collaboration not only amongst themselves, but also they're going to be fostering interdisciplinary skills, such as right now we're working on uh, connections in language arts and history through music. I'd like to now bring up Tim Fioravanti, who's going to explain the high school curriculum in grades 9 through 12. We have two choruses, two bands, and two orchestras, uh, all by, by ability level. One is uh, for the more developing kids, and one is for the higher achieving kids. In our strings program, the string orchestra is an non-audition group for kids that want to play, in, that have already been playing a stringed instrument, and maybe some kids who want to learn how to play a stringed instrument. 
and it's uh, age appropriate for those students at that level. The chamber orchestra has been added since the last uh, curriculum uh, because we had enough kids and a wide disparity of, of ability that we could do two separate ensembles, one playing higher literature and one playing more developing literature. Uh, as you can see, the technical requirements are more rigorous. They play unabridged literature, which is literature especially written for that orchestra and not something that, was, that might be watered down for the lower, the, the lower ensemble to get them to learn all their basics uh, musically. And we've also formed some uh, smaller chamber ensembles where kids have to perform one on a part, which gives them more responsibility to then be able to play in a setting and be the only person on that part and have a lot of responsibility. Now, our general music, in the past we've had music fundamentals, and most people know it as music theory, and it, it has been a preparatory course for music majors, kids that want to go on into music, and for students that just want to learn more in depth about music fundamentals and music analysis. And it gives a great opportunity for our guitarists to come in and actually learn how to read music and not just look at tablature and, and try to figure things out. They actually come in and learn to read music and they have a blast doing it. New to the curriculum, well actually old to the curriculum, was our jazz improvisation class which was for instrumentalists to then hone their skills more in the improvisation to enhance the jazz band and to learn how to improvise. So what we've done is, since we, and you'll see the next slide, is that we've, we've made jazz ensemble a class. So what we did with the jazz improv is incorporate some of that in the jazz ensemble class. And we also have an after school group, which is a jazz combo, and they learn more of their improvisation there. So we didn't really lose jazz improvisation, we just moved it around to suit the, the needs of the, the kids at the high school. We've added the music and modern culture class, which is, Mr. Taglianetti would like this, it's a music appreciation class that he always wanted to see at the high school. And it, it will it'll focus on classical music, jazz, and popular music. So what I want to do is connect music through the history to where the kids are listening to things now. How did it get to what you're listening to now? So we're going to be able to do that. And various music genres, uh, what was the role of the music, and how did it impact the culture and various cultures? We have two choruses, course by level, same thing as the orchestras. They all align with the state standards. The musical concepts, enduring understandings, and, and essential questions are, are similar for each ensemble, yet the rigor is higher for the chamber choir, the chamber orchestra, and the jazz ensemble. Um, technical requirements, we've added a new jazz component to the chamber choir where we, we teach them some jazz pieces and then we take them to a, a national evaluation, which is the Berklee College of Music Jazz Festival, and uh, they've really got to enjoy that part of it. Um, and then the chorus is open to anybody and it's age appropriate for those students that want to come in and sing and learn more music. Now the band, before this we had two bands, we had a concert band and we had a symphonic band. We felt the need to put the jazz ensemble as a class and you approved that last year and then we still have the symphonic band. So they all align with the state standards, musical concepts are the same. The jazz ensemble is by audition because like the chamber ensembles with the orchestra, it's one person on a part. So it's, it's a lot of responsibility and it's music, a hard high school almost getting into the college range. And the symphonic band is open to everybody and it's a true symphonic orchestration. Now, on a side note, the connection we have with Mr. Uh, Osmond is that his daughter has actually been performing at Waterford High School for the past six years as a part of our jazz festival, because his daughter in Colchester has been with the William J. Johnson Middle School Band, yeah. yes, and the uh, Bacon Academy High School Band, and she was actually one of our all-state jazz trumpet players this year. So we've, we've connected before. So. And he knows all about the Berkeley thing, so he can explain <laughs> that to you. Anything else? That's it? Okay. So thank you. Some of the benefits of this process going through the curriculum revision 
Uh, we've all, in the music department, increased our collaboration, uh, not only amongst the schools, but uh, amongst the grade levels. And we've increased the clarity of our vertical alignment, which means we've shared terminology and made sure that we've sh shared terminology, which eases student transition from grades five to six, grades eight to nine, and also in case students may be transitioning from Asogachi to Great Neck or Great Neck to Quaker Hill, all of the terminology they're going to be using all right, is identically the same. So they won't be walking into a new situation saying, I never heard that term before. It's vertically aligned so that all teachers are using the same kind of terminology. We've also been able to brainstorm uh, different instructional strategies to help students meet grade level expectations. We do that at our uh, weekly PLC meetings. And going forward, we're going to continue in our music department to have dialogue within our professional learning community in our department meetings using the new curriculum as a touchstone, which means we're going to be taking and featuring questions and strategies based on the document. So uh, you can tell that this is a highly collaborative group, and a part of the process really was, as Gary uh, ended, that vertical articulation. Every group, uh, so the elementary group presented to the secondary group about theirs and vetted it, and, and as the middle school presented to the whole group, so there was a lot of uh, in input from everyone, and we'll be happy to answer the further questions. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pellers. Are there questions from the board? Jody? It's basically a comment. I was very impressed with your curriculum. I know it took a lot of work, and I just wanted to let you know all of your concerts are just phenomenal, and I'm really proud of our music program in Waterford. I always have been, and I could see it just getting better and better. I just had one question, though. Um, do you ever ask the students, especially at the high school level, Tim, how they feel about new curriculum when you institute it? I. That's a good point because I was having a discussion today with the students about, um, you know, that we teach to the national standards and what they are and, and the, the current philosophy of music education with a high order of thinking is they ask all the why questions. And when you ask the why questions, you have to have a foundation musically to get to the why foundation. So I tell them that everything in the curriculum is is kind of like, you know, and I equate what we do in our ensembles as to a sport. You don't go out and play a game. You have all these fundamentals that you have to learn, and the curriculum is basically the fundamentals, the concert's the game. And then we have to know why and how we're doing everything to get to that level of performance. So, yes, they are involved. In fact, I've also been involving them. And, and as far as the seed program goes, which is which I find very valuable, in our setting because it, gets, it gives the kids more ownership in the program where they can, instead of me giving them an assessment, they can help create the assessment with me about what they think they should be learning mm -hmm. and what I should be teaching them with the curriculum. So that's been kind of fun too. And they get to teach sometimes, <laughs> so they get all this valuable um, learning situations that's not just me or someone lecturing to them. Mm -hmm. The whole program, if you've noticed the proficiencies of, of the C program, they want you to get the kids involved a lot more. Mm -hmm. So, and they've been enjoying it. That's great. That's okay. a good thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jody. Um, like Jody, I'm very impressed with the new curriculum, and particularly, I like the piece where you put in the history of music appreciation so that our students know the entire uh, alignment from the beginning to where we are today with modern music. And if I may ask, because I'm still going, it's a lot to absorb, um, maybe you would come back to us at the end of uh, a period of time and let us know how you think this curriculum is working, the mm -hmm. curriculum compared to uh, what we had in the past. But I appreciate all the hard work uh, on behalf of the board that went into devising the new curriculum, and like Jody will be anxiously awaiting to come and hear some of the new music that will be performed as well. Thank you. I think that uh, can take us to our next curriculum, which would be the counseling. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great tonight. <laughs> We've been working hard to get motions on the table. <laughs> it's so, it's such, uh, we're so impressed by it. Okay, so we Chris, will need to take like this. To <laughs> 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 we will need to take a motion.
so moved. Would you want me to read? Yes, please read the okay. motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the, I didn't see it there. I'm as bad as you have. <laughs> that the Waterford Board of Education approves the music curriculum, the K through 12, as presented. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Is there a second to that so. motion? Second by Dave. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you to our music staff. Thank you very Thank you. much. Appreciate it. Um, with that, we, we also have another curriculum that we'd like to present tonight at school counseling. Yes. So, uh, you know, you've heard uh, presented at uh, past meetings uh, from uh, Kelly the concept of a, of a student success plan, um, and we're here tonight. Uh, to, to show you a comprehensive school counseling uh, program uh, that um, we've had many of the pieces in place for many of the years here in Waterford, but this is the first time that it's been pulled together as a cohesive K-12 curriculum. Uh, we've had uh, six counselors, so all of our counselors participate uh, in this process. We've had two psychologists uh, representing the elementary schools, uh, we've had, uh, we've got our mileage out of uh, one intern uh, that has, uh, has been with the process the whole time uh, for guidance. And um, for this process, we've uh, employed two consultants. And so I'd like to, again, turn it over to our, uh, our team here for a presentation. And let me just quickly switch PowerPoints. for giving us the opportunity to work collaboratively um, for the first time. We're very excited, um, grades K through 12 creating and giving us the opportunity to implement a K through 12 school counseling curriculum. Um, you may not have been aware that we also have national standards and student competencies that we have to put into place. So being able to actually put it into writing so that everybody's aware of our national standards, the American School Counselor Association, um, makes us very proud to be able to do that for the Waterford District. Um, many, many districts have not gotten as far as we have with this K-12 curriculum, so again, we're really proud of the accomplishments that we worked collaboratively with everybody here. Um, I just want to acknowledge, and Craig did mention, but I want to state their names, everybody that participated in the collaboration, um, Christina Kenyon and Isabella Fideswa from the elementary school level. Um, there's Brian Lynch. Why are you sitting over there? Just because you're retired. Get up here. And Paula Needle uh, yeah, at the middle school level. That's not fair. Come on. You said you weren't going to do this. Um, at the high school level, we have um, Jason Adler, Stephanie Di Natale, Juan Wan Chen, myself, Kelly Shannon. And as um, Craig mentioned, we did get a lot of mileage out of Bree Dolce, our school counseling intern, and she did a wonderful job helping us out and supporting us. So the first thing I want to talk about is why did we develop a school counseling <laughs> curriculum? And mainly, it's so that we have a very consistent uh, uh, scope and sequence K through 12. While we only have um, counselors at the 6 through 12 level, level, Christina and Isabella have ensured us that they're going to be delivering the school counseling program through the elementary school with the help of staff and um, projects that they will be doing <coughs> with students. We need to align the standards to the American School Counseling Association goals and student competencies, so that's really key here. Even though we did have some alignment, it just wasn't consistent. We also want a delivery program that supports the needs of all students. So we want to make sure it's standardized and that all students are achieving their um, college and career readiness and their success, K through 12. As well, we need to focus our goals on individual student needs through individual planning, responsive services, and um, having a curriculum there for us all to deliver. Also, um, we need to make sure it's data-driven and our decision-making and the goals of our program as we assess the program, as we put it into place, to make sure we use that data to drive how we manage our program. And without a consistent K-12 curriculum, we are unable to do that consistently across the board. And lastly, we need to make sure that we constantly improve our foundation, delivery, and management 
an accountability system. So not only do we have to put it into place, we have to ensure that we assess our program each year and change things up as we need to, and that's really important, collaboratively especially. As we look back, we said, well, what did we have in place that we used already? So you may not be aware what we already had in place. And we did have some programming in place um, at the elementary level, though we didn't call it school counseling. Um, at the middle school level, we had lessons. At the high school level, we had lessons. It, they, the lessons were aligned with state standards. However, it just wasn't consistent, and we needed to make that consistent. Many lessons were developed but we didn't have a formal curriculum written down for everybody to follow. So if another school counselor stepped in, they would be ready to follow the curriculum, just as any curriculum across the board um, in any curriculum area that we have, middle school, elementary, or high school. And consistency, the K through 12 scope and sequence, as in any curriculum we develop, we needed to have that in place as school counselors also. It is a curriculum and the scope and sequence and the integration from level to level, so the student's transition through the curriculum is very, very important. And we didn't have complete alignment with the standards, and that this has ensured that we do. In every lesson that we put into place, you will see, um, as our staff will explain, we'll have a scope, um, an alignment with a goal of the American School Counselor Association, and um, the content standards as well as student competency is aligned with the lesson. And now, after a collaborative accomplishment, they made fun of my little icons and my little pictures on my, my thing, but um, based on the ASCA standards, we now have a clear scope and, se and uh, sequence, which is really nice because as the students travel from elementary school to middle school to high school, just as, as in any curriculum, we need to ensure that the skills, the college, career, personal social skills are built on each other, not just separate entities in time. As well, now that we have this in place, we can become an integral part of um, supporting the achievement of students alongside and within um, the rest of the staff and their the school mission and goals. We now have it designed to support all students' individualized academic, personal, social, and career goals. And as John wanted to know the last time I spoke, how are we going to implement the student success plan? Now we actually have something concrete and in writing to make sure some of the pieces of the student success plan are in place, which is the state mandate, and that's what the state wanted us to do. We have a consistent program delivery for all students. We have individualized planning, <coughs> responsive services, and indirect services. We have um, skills and knowledge for all students to make sure they achieve the, to be lifelong learners, um, achieve their 21st century skills, are productive members of society through the use of technology with Naviance. We can take that 6 through 12 so that we have a consistent scope and sequence as they use the Naviance program to build their college and career readiness skills. And also, as I said before, it's now a critical, critical excuse me, component of the student success plan. Pieces K through 12 will be used for student success planning, and from 6 through 12 will be part of a formal student success success plan um, driven by the state mandate. Okay, so what we're going to do now is have each member of the staff come up and give um, talk about the scope and sequence and student competencies. Thank you. I had a little bit of the scope. <laughs> okay, so we're a little bit behind all of our um, faculty friends in terms of <laughs> We don't have very awesome things like Common Core to rely on, so we're working with our professional standards from, as uh, Kelly said, um, ASCA, the American School Counseling Association, as well as the comprehensive uh, school counseling curriculum developed by the State Board of Ed, as well as uh, the Connecticut version of the uh, School Counseling Association. So we have uh, different domains. We have academic, we'll get to, a to two others later, which are personal, social, and then um, career, and basically college career readiness. We have standards within each of these domains that the same standards, skills for learning, school success, um, academics to life success for academic development, and under there are probably hundreds of thousands of goals that uh, we can choose from uh, depending on what the needs are of our students. And we chose uh, to give uh, one lesson example, just the beginning of each lesson uh, for each area to show what's done at different levels, elementary, middle, and high school. To give you idea of how this would be shown in each level. Um, and the goal, the lessons, and the, what areas and strands, excuse me, 
domains and goals we went for was based off the need assessment we all did. So for um, the grades two through five, uh, so the elementary level, uh, the first lesson that we are sharing is the decision making. Uh, the content center is clearly under the academic domain, academic to life success, and they'll demonstrate how to find a decision. So again, it's a developmentally appropriate. And there are career lesson plans for the little guys and little girls. Um, and it's really important because it's the, like the Mr. Rogers, what, you know, what does this person do in your neighborhood? And it's brief introductions to all the different opportunities that are out there to excite their, their minds and you know, help their aspirations. And just like that, they're also in high school are about communication skills, which sadly we still need to work on quite a bit. Uh, so all of these are done for all grade levels and are developmentally appropriate. So again, there are the three the, the um, three areas here with under academic development. We'll move now to the social, personal social development, where you can find there are three more standards. Uh, the learners will acquire the attitudes, knowledge, and personal skills to help them understand, respect self, and others. Uh, the goal setting and attainment, extremely important for all the grade levels as well. Uh, learners will demonstrate the ability to make decisions, set goals, and to take necessary action to achieve those goals. And content standard number six, the survival and safety skills, which is personally my favorite of all of them because it brings to mind serve, stop, drop, and roll. Um, learners will demonstrate the proper application of safety and survival skills to their personal and physical well-being. So the example that we've chosen for this one is from grade six and about respect. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? It's under the domain personal social. And of course, uh, it is about respecting self and others, clearly an extremely important um, lesson for any level, but it's particularly in middle school. And so demonstrating the knowledge of different emotions and their impact on personal relationships. What does it look like to be sad? Is it expressed differently for different kids? And what do you do in the instances where you're worried about someone? I mean, these are extremely important skills for any level, and they're one thing that the curriculum does for us is it builds. We now know what elementary is doing. Elementary knows what middle school is doing, and we can work together um, to uh, make sure that the skills that are developed at one level are built upon very similar to what we were seeing from the music curriculum. And last but certainly not least from my presentation is the uh, career development, and really college and career development. Um, investigating the careers, learning, learners will demonstrate the skills to make career choices in relation to knowledge and self and, uh, and knowledge. Knowledge and self and knowledge, that was interesting. Self and others, we'll say. Um, curriculum outcome, learners will apply strategies to achieve future success and satisfaction, which is incredibly important because getting a good job, but also enjoying it is quite nice. And then learners will demonstrate knowledge of the factors involved in career decision making. And I do want to emphasize again that though this may seem to be the most apt um, connection to high school, this is not just at high school, they are doing it at every level. Um, so ours is the career exploration lesson. Um, it is under the investigative careers, and we utilize, uh, which means recognize skills and training required by jobs, recognizing helpful high school courses in which to enroll, and being introduced to the college career pathways. I do want to note that under each of these um, captions of the lesson plan, it does give an indication of how long uh, the lesson is. We are utilizing a mentor program within the middle school, within the high school. We're using advisory in addition to class periods, and elementary is using the classes themselves. So there's different ways of presenting. Also, please note that the facilitator may be different when you look at the curriculum, depending on what we're looking at. Sometimes it will be the teacher um, of the class. It will be the advisory teacher. Sometimes it will be the counselor. More often than not, it will be the counselor. Um, the mentor at the middle school level, perhaps the school psychologist, or the teacher, him or herself, at the elementary level. So that's it for me. And we'll move on to our next presentation. <coughs> So for the elementary school, as was alluded to, we're kind of looking at the developmental basis of some of these skills that they'll be learning as they move on. So we're looking at it from the, from the success, both in and out of school, both school success, understanding and beginning career understanding, and then personal and social success. So we're kind of taking some of the skills and we're, we're spreading through the elementary school levels and what helps you be successful as a student? What helps you be successful from your first day of kindergarten? Starting with just being able to listen to your teacher and active listening. Moving on to study habits and working independently as you work through the grades. Moving on to your ability to, sh to set short-term goals and make a decision, an informed decision as you had seen in the um, 
the example of the lesson. And then again, career exploration is not something that happens once you just get to a certain age. It's something, you know, we ask the little kids, so what do you want to be when you grow up? And really helping them understand what jobs are out there and begin that understanding with what are the jobs in your community? What are, what are some of the jobs that you know of? And just helping um, create an understanding of their options and then helping them understand their personal interests, their personal talents, and how that may relate to something as they move on in life as a, as a goal for a career for them, um, even at those beginning levels. And then also helping them understand that success comes from personal responsibilities, both in school and out of school, and how to achieve those. So from that exploration also comes moving on to an understanding of personal and social success, what helps you to be personally and socially successful as you, as you move on in the world. It starts with self-knowledge, your feelings, the feelings of others, helping understand our similarities and differences in groups and how that helps us to develop respect for ourselves and respect for others. And then um, moving on to personal safety as well and when do we need help, how do we get help, recognizing those situations where we might want to use personal coping skills or do we need the help of others with this problem solving. And then again, building our conflict resolution skills as we're moving um, developmentally through the grades. And kind of building that foundation for as we kind of transition the kids on to middle school, that they begin to thought, think about these things um, before they move on. And then I have to... So when Isabella and I were charged with looking at six different grades and how we were going to incorporate all of this through them, we looked developmentally what would be appropriate for the kids. So we went through the goals, and we were also thinking about time management for the children. <coughs> we wanted to make it doable, not overwhelming to them. So we looked to see how we could incorporate it into the day in a natural way. Um, so we have literacy blocks at the elementary level. Um, so we really based um, this curriculum on a literacy-based curriculum. We um, generated a long list of books that teachers can use for the different goals and objectives um, for the national standards, um, accompanied by lessons when there wasn't a book option. Um, so we, we looked through the curriculums of other parts, social studies, health, language arts, and how those there's overlap, and also with the challenge program with fifth grade. So there's a lot of overlap. Um, and when there wasn't, we created specific lessons and have book options. Um, at the elementary level, because we don't have school counselors, we have school psychologists and social workers. Um, we are using the classroom teachers as our basis, and we're working at the collaborative model between the three of us at each elementary level to work um, if they need more um, and have us come into the classroom, or if it's something that we would like to um, add to, we work with them collaboratively. Um, we also created, so they wouldn't be so overwhelmed, a checklist for them at each grade level so they could actually record where, um, what they did, what book they used, and that they met each of um, the goals for that grade level. Hi, I'm Paul Almeida from the middle school. I work with uh, Brian Lynch and Bree Dolce, our intern. <laughs> Uh, we're very lucky at the middle school in that, as you know, we have, you keep hearing about three domains, academic, personal, social, and, oh God, I feel like the guy from Texas, academic, personal, social, <laughs> such a career vocation. But it's going on, it's on to their team, still taping, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we have, three tri <laughs> we have three trimesters. So it fits very neatly for us to develop a curriculum that will meet all these domains' needs during each trimester. The problem being that Brian and I were also going through the uh, training for SSPs with the state's new initiative. Um, and we wanted to try to integrate that into our curriculum so that it was um, covered. The, uh, we just wondered, how are we going to do this? And the difficulty was is that there were so many lessons in all the domains and all the skills that it became very difficult for two counselors to do all that. So um, Mr. Sachs was gracious enough to allow us to use the mentoring program. So what we did was while we were building the guidance curriculum, we were building a mentoring curriculum at the same time. And they, they dovetail together perfectly. So when the every time they have a mentoring lesson, 
it is something that Brian and I and Bree would be doing a lesson that would help integrate the concepts they were learning in mentoring. And that's how the whole thing goes. So the first trimester, we do academic skills, everything from the sixth grade, how do you study, what do you do, how do you chunk your assignments. The next, the second trimester, we do personal social. Uh, how do you respect, reflect, and respond? Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you deal with people? How do you deal with conflicts? And then in the third trimester, we deal with the academic, which fits nicely for our eighth grader. Our eighth graders leaving to the high school and um, whatever high school they're going to, we introduce them to the high schools and we tell them what curriculums are there. We have the, the high schools come over. Now, everything doesn't fit perfectly, obviously, because we have the vocational schools want to come over early in the year, and that's more career vocational. So when you look over the pacing guide, and this is the counseling pacing guide, you'll see that we're dealing with the tech schools and the presentations. Well, that's career vocational. And really, that's something we try to deal with in the third trimester. But that's when they're able to come over, and that's when we try to take the students out to the vocational school so they understand that. Um, but our counseling lessons in each trimester pretty much do mimic the mentoring lessons. And it's a really nice way that allows us to get a lot more skills to the students than two or even three counselors could. So when you move over to the uh, mentoring lessons, you'll see they're doing very much the same thing except more short little lessons. Everything from study habits to listening skills, problem solving, naming that feeling, and it goes academic, personal, social, career, vocational. And that's how we put it together. It's a simple way to put it together, but it fulfills the needs of the students. And really what we're doing here with any guidance curriculum is building that what's become a cliche, lifelong learners. People, students who have the skills <coughs> to interact with people, communicate with people, they have the study skills, and they know what their strengths and weaknesses are, and they can put all that together and build a student success plan on their goals and what they'd like to do and what they'd like to grow up and be. And that's what our focus is at the middle school, because we are in the middle, and we do transition them from the real nurturing time to the more independence of the high school. Any questions? Thank you. And now, um, Ms. Can click? Hi, I'm Stephanie DiNatale. I'm one of the school counselors at the high school. I'm going to be reviewing with you um, the pacing guide for our lessons at the high school as well as our evening um, activities, our parent nights. Um, essentially, the pacing guide um, breaks down by, um, by grade level, by month, what activity we will be completing with students. <clears throat> we will be delivering our lessons um, in advisory, as Jason had mentioned, um, as well as um, sometimes using class time. Um, you can see the pacing guide ensures that we are delivering a consistent um, program to students um, that is developmentally appropriate. As you can see in ninth grade, we start beginning of the school year meeting with our freshman students in advisory, orienting them to the school, going over different clubs and activities for them to participate in, going over who they should know, who are the important people, how to navigate the school. Um, you can read along, obviously, but, and then you can see, you know, junior year is focused a lot on goal setting, post-secondary planning, um, and then the, the final column um, shows our evening presentations where we like to um, provide evening um, presentations so that parents who aren't able to come during the school day because of work or what have you are still able to get all the information that is pertinent for their child. Um, the, the next slide is just a continuation. Um, of our pacing guide. This includes all of the the workshops, our advisory lessons, and the I'm sorry, the workshops are the workshops we'll be delivering during advisory. Our lessons are in the classroom, just so that you can differentiate. Um, and that's essentially it. In the spring, you can see that it's focused a lot in May, June on the eighth graders transitioning up to the high school. So that is included for you as well. This doesn't include our individual planning sessions. This is all the group work that we're doing with students through advisory and classroom lessons. Thank you. Okay. I'm Lauren Chan. I'm a wonderful high school counselor. 
this slide was kept very simple, but that's a, a conclusion of what <coughs> we're going to do from grade, first grade to the 12th grade. We need to keep the sequence. We need to keep the scope. And the sequence scope, we need to follow the standard that Jason just introduced us. There are three big domains, academic, career, personal, and social. We truly believe we, if we can provide the service to the students through the lessons, through the small groups, through the individual planning sessions, we follow their developmental needs. How do we know they have the net needs? For this curriculum, we start from the need assessment because we want to know what they need and then we can write a curriculum to fulfill their needs. Now, a curriculum we write it today, would, would, would it be a forever curriculum? No. The needs might be different. So we need to continuously and consistently to do the need assessment. When we build a curriculum, we have a pacing guide, we know which one, what we should do, we know we're going to follow the curriculum from the first grade to the 12th grade, but we also have to check about ourselves. We have to do the self-study on the annual phase for us to know what works, what don't work, and we can adjust, and then we can make it better next year. And that's what we want to do continuously. That's the evaluate our program, evaluate our performance. And when we grow as professionally, our students will have a, a good environment to grow. With all this, and with what we just mentioned about the success plan, everything will be in place. And certainly, our co curriculum, our program, will help us, whatever school district, to prepare our kids be ready for 21st century. So uh, you see that um, there's been a deliberate shift from what we used to call guidance counselors to school counselors, uh, where they're truly uh, educators uh, in every sense of the word. Classroom, individual will always continue. Uh, you'll also see that the format of this curriculum looks different than other formats because many, many teachers will be teaching this. You heard at the elementary le uh, level, the classroom teachers will be delivering these lessons as a reading lesson within the reading block, but the message is helpful along this continuum. At the middle school, the pre-existing mentoring program will complement what the counselors can do within the lessons. And at the high school level, the advisory <coughs> block will be a little more tight in the sense of what the teachers will be delivering um, in addition to what the counselors will be uh, also complementing. So we present you tonight with uh, comprehensive school counseling and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hey, I noticed that at the middle school you plan to have career days and at the high school you also do that. Are you, gonna, are you thinking about maybe having that in the elementary school too? Because they used to when my children went to Southwest. But I didn't, I didn't see it in here. I read it really fast because there was so much to it. But, um. So it's a good thought, Jody. So let us, let us think about that and let us get back to you. And one more question. Absolutely. Um, the, the criteria um, for kindergartners, is the Friendship School using the same the uh, counseling curriculum checklist? Will the Friendship School yeah. be using the same checklist you have? The Friendship School have gets a copy of all of our kindergarten sections of the curriculum, so uh, Kathy will be getting this uh, as well, and then she'll have to, you know, um, have her kindergarten teachers sort of like develop which lessons they want to use in this. But yes, it is uh, the, the Friendship School uses our curriculum. I was really happy to see that it's con that it also includes career counseling also, not just I don't mean just going on to college, but it's important to go on to college if you want to, but I think there's a group of students that want to go out into the workforce or um, they just don't know what they want to do, and I think your curriculum here will really help them, you know, pursue other interests and look into it, and uh, maybe what they want to be in, in uh, the elementary level isn't what they want to be in high school, so you're giving them the opportunity to really uh, pursue any type of career they want. And thank you. There was a lot of, I know there was a lot of hard work that went into this, too. 
Can I just add one thing that might be helpful? Because our school counseling <coughs> curriculum is not delivered necessarily consistently in the classroom every day with assessments every day, you may wonder, like, how can we keep track whether or not the students are getting this? How do we know that the students are getting this? But I think, um, I know I've mentioned the Naviance program before to the board and, um, and gave you sort of an overview of the purpose of that. But Naviance, just so you know, has a task um, analysis and task completion um, portion. Without it up here, I can't really show it to you, but you can actually put in tasks for the students to complete. And as all of the counselors go through um, their curriculum with the students, we can mark off that those things are completed, which really helps us with the student success plan to ensure that that's happening with all students. So I just wanted to let you know how that works hand in hand. I just had one uh, quick question with this new uh, comprehensive plan and using our experts in the classroom, will the uh, direct service to the students still remain a, so the same amount of time, even though because you're collaborating and using a uh, multi- so, so at the elementary level, you heard that you know our, our school psychologists and social workers do have a, a full load of, of individual and small group counseling. They can complement what the teachers do would reinforce strategically in some classrooms as needed. And because at the middle school and high school, they've really uh, divided up the work between at the middle school uh, mentoring and sort of push in uh, models with the counselors and at the high school advisory and push in lessons from the counselors, um, they still have time for individual planning. And may I just also ask, as we usually do curriculum, revival and revision, it's usually on a seven-year mm -hmm. sequence, but with this... Uh, we will take, build that uh, into the schedule. This will be ongoing. Yes. Sorry, that's what you said. Thank you. That's, that's important. And just to address your previous concern, I think part of the we hope wonderful thing about this is by pushing ourselves out more into the classroom yeah. with the kids, mm -hmm. there will be a more welcoming feeling for them yeah. to seek us out. So perhaps students who otherwise might have slipped through the cracks because we pursue them and invite them, but they don't know us well enough or they feel like we'll come important enough, they'll see us on a much more frequent basis and hopefully that makes, makes us that much more inviting to talk to. I just wanted to think about this part. Um, the comprehensive, the school counseling program, the goal is provide service to all students, mm -hmm. but that's kind of inviting them and then we follow up with the individual planning session. So that comes together because sometimes the kids they feel more comfortable talk to you in the individual private setting than in the bigger classroom. But there are some topics that would be better to be, you know, give it to the kids in the big classroom setting more efficiently. But when you get to the personal level, it will be delivered in the one-on-one -on -one base. I think I can speak for the board by uh, saying that we're all very impressed by this. I never, you know, when you think about. Counseling, you never how far you've come in really being in the classroom and doing all this great work. And we thank you very much for being here tonight and all the hard work that went into devising this curriculum. And I won't forget the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, may I have a motion to accept the music curriculum from K through 12? School counseling. School counseling. Oh, excuse me, I said music. So I said, okay, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell it to everyone in a moment, although I wasn't going to complain. I'm fighting Lyme disease right now. It's the truth. Um, so, school counseling. Excuse me, I, I meant what I said to you. Thank you. The motion. Jody? I'd like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education approves the school counseling curriculum for grades K through 12 as presented. Thank you, Jody. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by David. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Congratulations. Thank Thank you. Thanks for being much. here tonight. Great work. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for helping me. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. That will take us this evening to our next presentation, I believe, on the teacher evaluation plan. Uh, by state statute, uh, the teacher and administrative evaluation plans need to come before the board, right? Yeah, uh, so as you recall, um, we have had uh, the benefit of really a living um, the new teacher evaluation plan uh, via the seed pilot. And um, when we presented to you the pilot, uh, you recall that there were really um, two big components uh, of the teacher evaluation. 
um, when it talks about student outcomes and sort of professional growth. And in the teacher evaluation plan, you'll see that, uh, that there are components for uh, setting student learning objectives, and that, uh, that in addition to looking at the whole school uh, academic indicator, uh, would equate to 50% of the teacher evaluation plan, and the other 50% is really about the uh, educators setting professional growth goals uh, around instruction, and uh, then uh, getting some feedback from uh, the parents. And so um, you have uh, the document uh, um, that has the explanation up front and then uh, some of the appendix uh, in back in the forms. Um, I think uh, we can do a better job maybe tying the uh, front and noting what uh, pages in the appendix there could be. Uh, but the content here um, would be happy to answer whatever questions you may have. Um, we're very pleased to have had uh, 11 uh, teachers uh, and an administrator on this uh, committee. And uh, again, I can't speak uh, how helpful it's been to uh, live, although uh, challenging at times. And um, like uh, any other experience, you're glad when it's over. Uh, by living the pilot, uh, but um, it has given us great insight and wisdom to create this uh, slight hybrid. Um, and when I say slight hybrid, uh, there's been so many statutorial core, core requirements that we must meet, and the State Department still has to review and uh, accept our plan, um, but uh, we, we think we have some solid documents here and some great thinking from our uh, educators. And I just wanted to add the five teachers that really served as the uh, school representative alongside our administrators as we went through the pilot were all very much part of this process in the development of this plan. Thank you. Um, just Craig, if you might be able to, uh, and, and at first I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone that worked really on this and that I know Waterford was one of the pilot uh, town, so it's it's a, it's good work not only for our district but for the rest of the state. So I just want to recognize all of you for the hard work. But one one piece that concerned me a little bit on the testing, with the Common Core being implemented with this, will there be some room in the evaluation piece? Um, because it's my understanding with the Common Core, it won't the testing won't be the same as our past testing, so I'm wondering in the evaluation piece whether teachers will have the opportunity to show that growth and not necessarily right on the test score. So, so I'm like, not sure that was planned into this. Yeah, that's a great question, Kathleen. And so like any of the, any time the CAP testing does a new generation or the CMT testing does a new generation, we, we have sort of an idea of where the, the students might be, but when there's a new test, there's always that one year of calibration. And so so as we've as we've seen from CMT and CAT changes, there's there's that little adjustment. And as we move to the SBAC assessment, there will be such an adjustment too. And so uh, the the setting rigorous yet obtainable goals for the first year of the SBAC will have to be a little more cautiously <coughs> set than uh, right now when we set CMT or CAP objectives because we have a great track record and understanding of what the assessment really is. And so I think we will be cautious in uh, the 2014-15 school year uh, when that new assessment comes because it is it will be new learning for all of us. Thank you, Greg. Are there any questions? Yeah, oh, John. Uh, Craig and I had a long discussion today about this. Um, when I, I read the document, um, I had a couple of, uh, and, and he touched upon this, uh, a lot of the difficulties that I had, um, I think could be clarified, uh, as, as he said, that in the front matter, when we say things like, uh, and I'm just looking at uh, page 12, it says, uh, uh, written, uh, this in, which, will, which includes written feedback. Mm -hmm. Now, there are forms in the back that are going to be utilized. So if it was reference, reference there, I mean, because I, I didn't know what form of written feedback there was, and I, you know, my first thought was, well, all right, the one evaluator is going to use one format, and, but, but right, okay, 
I mean, so for somebody to read this, it's, you know, it's always it's a great say, all right, um, I know what that looks like, and I know what we want to do. And um, I have to say, it was a great phone call because we were we have been so immersed in the seed process that sometimes it takes sort of that objective eye to, to, to add that clarity. And so that's why uh, I took away from our conversation today, John, that's, that's just a critical uh, enhancement uh, to, to just do throughout the document. And so it won't change the content, but I think it will add uh, some clarity in reading. Yeah. I mean, another example at the top of page six, uh, if they do not meet the approved criteria, well, kind of left me hanging is, well, what's the approved criteria? And yet, in talking to Greg, he told me where it was. And how we'll put that so there was, a, there, was, there was a good discussion, um, and, I, and uh, it was very helpful. The, I also uh, mentioned to Craig that I thought that this should be a, uh, that both of these plans should not have, we should not have requested the Board of Ed to approve them in a one-shot deal. Because I think there's a lot of information. Now, you've been you've been prototyping this. You've been working on this very hard, and then putting this plan together. Okay, so this is a, this is one of the most significant plans that you're asking mm -hmm. the board of ed to approve. Um, uh, and I'm certainly not putting it ahead of the curriculum, but it's it's a. So I really thought that this should be a plan that uh, perhaps. Is we are talked through and we understand it much like the policy, which are much briefer and even more simpler to get through. For us to look at it, to ask questions, to perhaps provide feedback, and then second time after whatever we agree to do with it, then come back to it. Um, but I'm willing to approve it with the understanding that Craig's going to do some clarification. But I really thought it should have been a, a, a two-time cycle uh, because there's a lot that we don't, as the board, we do not have full ownership or understanding of how we got to where this document is. I think the other thing, John, that's helpful for the board to understand is that this is now submitted to the state and it's going to be um, critiqued and we'll get feedback and you can almost bet we'll be getting some constructive feedback with some modifications. So certainly we can come back to the board at the June meeting and share with you the review from the state, uh, how we met the criteria and what we needed to do a little bit differently. Uh, so it's a good suggestion. Well, whatever, okay, however you want to do it tonight is, is fine with me. I, I, just, I just thought of it as it should have been a little bit, you know, should have been a two cycle process like the policies. Um, the other uh, off the wall, actually, the best my first thought when I turned on to page one, but assuming again that this is a rather significant plan that we are being asked to approve, could we have a board of ed member participate in the writing of this and to, to help with the, uh, the ownership of the content? Of the and, and, uh, again, upon reflection of that, John, it's an it's a outstanding idea. And I think if you do choose to uh, not approve it tonight, uh, but wait for the June meeting, um, then, as uh, Jerry said, if the state comes back, the state will come back, give us a review, we'll bring the committee together, maybe a board member could be on that subcommittee group at that point in time, and if, if we have to do any sort of enhancements, we certainly could, uh, and the board could hear that, uh, and it would be a further way to educate. Um, and really my comments are deal with both plans because I looking at the you know the, the, it's the same thing, it's the uh, it doesn't link you in the write up back to the appendices and the what have you. Uh, uh, so I don't, I don't know, whatever you want to do with it tonight. It's fine. Thank you for your suggestion, uh, John. But Mr. Keller, could you please explain because it was my understanding that the state was asking us to submit the plan by a specific date, am I incorrect? Yes, yeah. so uh, we had uh, until early May to submit, and uh, we have submitted to the State Department. Uh, they are doing their reviews. Uh, it's my understanding that we will be getting some feedback in uh, early June uh, from the State Department, because again, uh, I can't stress enough how restrictive the state legislation was with respect to the educator evaluation, teachers and administrators. 
So they have to go through, and, and we had a rubric, and it was like a five-page rubric about here are all the core requirements and how did we meet them. And they'll be giving us feedback on each and every one. And, you know, there may be uh, some uh, alterations that even though we were in the uh, pilot, um, we may have to sort of come back to. Uh, I would anticipate that. And that um, um, we have to, at some point in time, uh, to answer your question, Kathleen, uh, get it board approved. But um, the, the sense of urgency for that vote would be that as long as it's on the docket for this school year, it would be acceptable. So the, the choice really is up to the board if it's May or June on this one, because we have submitted it. Well, thank you for that clarification, yes. because that's what I was really aiming to find out, whether we have any urgency. The state Department of Education already has this plan? So okay. the state uh, had to get the plan in for just review of the core requirements, and the state also uh, will get an acknowledgement through the minutes of when it's board approved. So the state is looking for those two things. Uh, the state understands that uh, they can't tell what 169 boards of ed meet. And so uh, Jerry uh, will be corresponding with the state with when it's board approved. But uh, if it's May, if it's June, it would work. Our deadline was May 15th with the mm -hmm. board meeting tonight, June 23rd. Yeah. So we're going to get comments back from the state. We are. And we're going to get maybe. With little choice maybe. of revision, whatever the comments are, we need to meet the guideline. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing uh, early June, so I'm hearing within the next two weeks. <coughs> they'll, they'll give it to us here respectively, and it's just basically uh, our job to have the board approve it uh, again this school year. So, so either meeting or work. I'm just going to say right from the get go that I'm not going to vote to approve that. I don't think it's going to come as a news. You know what I do for a living. But I'll probably never vote to approve it based on some of the criteria that the state has imposed on us and not certainly any kind of reflection on the hard work that we've done in this. And I commend the people who've worked very hard at it. I just have very, very real reservations about big chunks of this that are mandated by the state and will probably. Never vote to approve it. Thank you for Unless the state makes significant changes in the way they plan to implement it. Uh, and just for that clarification piece, when is this plan uh, on your agenda for implementation? I know you went up to Hartford and spoke to the legislature and asked to do this in, in state, but it has to be this, on, fall. this fall. That's what I, I thought. So, we, uh, so you'll see parts of it will be annual uh, training calibration with our administrators. Uh, with our three new administrators, they'll have to go through the extensive training that we uh, uh, obtained through the pilot. Uh, in addition, we'll be doing some annual calibration as a whole collective. Um, and the teachers will have an orientation and will not take the same amount of time uh, as we done this year because uh, we have lived the pilot, so uh, refreshing what this document means uh, with a baseline of understanding, uh, again, will be a, a much more smoother year. Mm -hmm. I, I was reading through the reading all the different uh, frameworks for the teacher evaluation. It's very comprehensive. We're all, I, you must have used some of the old uh, plan and some of the old. Oh, categories because I can't imagine the amount of work that went into this is incredible. So um, we, we did a hybrid, which means yes. that we had uh, somewhat from our experience massaged uh, Number of some of the right. uh, processes, <coughs> some of the language, the semantics. Um, but again, as Jerry <coughs> said, the core requirements are such, and Tim said, are, are so prescriptive that really um, we had a state group blueprint. I really don't know. I don't really anticipate any major obstacles with the state, but I certainly don't have an, an issue if it's all right with the administration that, you know, to give the board time, more time to review it if that's what the board's going to do. As long as it doesn't hinder us moving forward in any way. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Jody, um, Jody, 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 Perhaps has to come back to the board for our approval again. Does it have to be resubmitted to the state for their approval again? Mm -hmm. So, so, so if the uh, so if we get comments back, so if you vote tonight, you could uh, make the motion such that it would be uh, pending state department approval, and then um, if we had a couple enhancements to make from the state, we sure. could do that and we could just give it as part of like an informational item, but it would be uh, a new vote from the board. If you crafted the motion that way, if we waited until June and then bring it forward, we might say, we've done an enhancement, here are the enhancements, and, and, and then represent it. Just uh, for benchmark. Mm -hmm. When did you need it? Well, you know what was interesting is the legislation actually says that the board approves before the review. So in order to send it forward for the review, the board has to approve. And so you would come back, as Craig talked about, and just share uh, what the adjustments are. I actually, while you were talking, John, wrote a modification to the motion and just adding to the end any recommended changes by the Connecticut State Department of Education. So, but we would come back and share those with the board. And so, I mean, when, when do you need to have August 1st, July 15th. We open the school year with the staff with uh, an evaluation plan, so they're very clear with that. And, and the legislation indicates that it's instituted in 169 communities from the fall. And so the practicality would be that we would want this document uh, printed by our town printer uh, for every single educator so that they would have uh, the, the plan. Uh, and as Jerry said, uh, you know, we want to roll that out in August, and that's why I was uh, suggesting that we did want to take action tonight that the June meeting would be okay. Probably not much behind that. Well, I, I, I would, whatever you need, Jerry. It's all right with you, John. I think this is a, a good suggestion if we can just put it onto the motion pending the state application <coughs> back to the board when that comes back into the state. I think it sends a, sends a message that the board is is uh, behind the plan, what we've done, all the hard work that went into it in the past year. And if there's need to make a modification, we can always certainly do that. So if that's all right with you. No, that's fine. I think that's you fine. should. Um, would you like to make the motion, John? With the pending I'm sure the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I feel badly for the teachers and the administrators having to do this. Well, we have to do I know, but it's just, I, I think that, I'm happy to say they, no, they only have three. Do you have to do it? I'm sorry, Joey, you've got questions. I keep getting interrupted. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, they only have to do three, three um, evaluations in the classroom <coughs> so rather than the six. One of our, one, one of our learnings, uh, and, you know, we predicted it when we read it, but we uh, gave it our all, uh, was that the six observations of all staff is undoable. And uh, Jerry and Don Macrino went up to the uh, legislative office and testified uh, to that end. Um, but to the end, that, that there's a lot of good components and not to delay as well. Um, so we will have done four observations, not six, of our staff. We still meet the core requirements that way. Uh, we don't meet the seed requirements, and we've given the feedback to uh, the school of DEAD, the school, uh, UConn School of DEAD, uh, as well as uh, the State Department, um, that six was not doable. And, uh, With 100% of the staff, all at once. Correct, so yeah, that's good, good clarification. Um, and that moving forward, if it's if the staff member achieves proficiency, then it's it's less uh, observations moving forward. Uh, if you're a non-tenured teacher and you're the district, it would be uh, a little bit more than if you were a tenured teacher at proficiency or a tenth grade. And I, I was happy to see the parent component asking the parents how they feel about things. And I 
also um, yeah, student uh, feedback. On the, the parent, and there are some good things. Yeah, and on the parent and staff surveys, um, we are uh, working, so the benefit of the pilot is we get some free service. Mm -hmm. So we are working with the company Panorama, and we'll be uh, conducting this uh, informational survey, and we'll be getting that in the month of June, um, which will give us baseline data to help the educators set goals mm -hmm. based upon that information, and have the administrators set goals based upon the staff input uh, coming in the fall. I was just concerned the teachers and the administrators being on the loan for the ex this extra. It is better than when the state came up with it. <laughs> so I move that the board for the Board of Education approve the teacher evaluation plan 2013-14 as presented and any recommended changes by the Connecticut State Department of Education. Thank you, John. Is there a second to that motion? Second by David. Is there any further discussion? Do we have to do we have to do this? I mean, we do we by state law. We have to put it in. Can we heard your comments. Are there any other <laughs> comments? <laughs> None. We will move for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. <laughs> I'm abstaining. I I <coughs> Three, one, one. Thank you. That takes us to the administrative evaluation plan. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Nice work. Great work. Thank you. It is similar. It is similar to uh, the teachers in many respects. Uh, the administrators uh, have to set uh, several goals, and uh, they would also be looking at uh, the SPI at the school level. Um, they'll also be looking at uh, how well the teachers are performing, and they'll be um, looking at the not only the student, uh, the, the parent data, but the staff data to set their goals. Um, a similar rubric uh, is set, and um, uh, Jerry and I will be uh, in, in our work now we're <coughs> in the process. The, again. The nice things that uh, are going about are the, um, you know, just conversations about instruction. And so with the teacher uh, evaluation plan of seed, I, I think a nice takeaway is that the, um, the after the observation, the post-conference is a productive and meaningful conference between the principal and the uh, teacher. Uh, so we're keeping our eye on instruction. And uh, on the administrator evaluation plan, um, just having, um, you know, Jerry and myself kind of, you know, having that instructional focus that we can all get better and enhance our craft uh, of learning. Uh, is, uh, and so we had uh, both uh, Pat and Jim uh, really review uh, the administrator evaluation plan. Questions from the board? So I move that the award for the Board of Education approve the administration administrator evaluation <coughs> 2013 14 as presented and any recommended changes by the state Department, Department of Education. Thank you, John. I'm going to second to that motion. Second. Second by John. See, we quickly have that motion. <laughs> Okay, if there's no further discussion, well, oh, there Jody is. I just have a question. Do you, do you and Craig feel you have enough time to do this? Yes. And so you, you do. Okay. You? We, we make the intellectually disabled uh, and uh, the reporting procedures and protocols. So uh, if there's any initial questions now, certainly I'll uh, strive to answer them. <coughs> and uh, if not, uh, we'll come back at the June meeting for a final meeting. Okay. Are there questions from the board on any one of the policies that we've just mentioned? But just may say, uh, just on the uh, computer, 
is that the student use is a new uh, to bring your own device piece is new to our policy. That is a new yes. feature. Yes. So the board may want to look over that and that and just so you know that there was ample discussion at the policy level on each one of these uh, new policies. And, and I must device. thank our uh, new high school principal uh, for his insight at that uh, policy meeting. So thank you, Andre. Yeah. Thank you. So you'll have if there are no questions tonight or can you do that? No. Okay, if there are no questions tonight, we'll, we'll give this more thorough review at our second reading. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. With that, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Joe. Second? Second. Thank you, by Tim. All those in favor? All right. Thank you for your endurance and perseverance. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.